CQ, CQ, CQ. This is AC9LZ calling a CQ, CQ and listening. So our project is building a call sign, sign, LED lit from the bottom that detects RF. Every time it detects RF within a the amateur frequency band, it changes its color. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is AC9LZ calling CQ and listening. So before we sit down and look at a detailed view of each of the components, each of the sections within the schematic, I want to give you a high level overview so you kind of understand where it's coming from. So this is the high level overview of the RF detecting LED sign. You have an antenna, you have some protection taking place here from over voltage, you have a bandpass filter, you have a clamper which pushes the signal up into the DC range, we've got a peak detector looking for peaks, we've got a comparator to determine at what point the RF signal should generate um, the red should cause the red LEDs to light. We also have an amplifier that's not shown that I'll highlight. And then we have a couple MOSFETs that are driving the LEDs. And then we actually have, are using a transistor as a NOT gate, which is kind of interesting as well. So let's go sit down and we'll take a look at the schematic together and go into much more detail. I failed to mention this is actually going to be a two-part series. The first part, I'm going to go over all of the schematics and the SVG files for the laser cutter and all that. And then in part two, we'll actually build one, use the laser cutter, all that fun stuff. So let's take a look at the schematic here. Um, I'm going to use a 5 volt wall wart. And uh, so I'm using this DC jack. I got a switch. I got a reverse polarity um, diode. And then we got 5 volts going into the circuit. If we go down here, We've got an antenna, and that antenna obviously is to pick up the RF signal. So we're going to pick up this this most likely very faint, even if it's you're you're set, sitting next to it. You know you're going to be picking up an RF signal. Maybe it, it's not so faint, but that's why we actually have this power protection circuitry in here with these two Schottky diodes, basically back to back. What we're doing is we're limiting the amount of power that can come into the circuit. Uh, via the voltage drops across these shot key resistors. So that'll be the maximum that I'll actually be able to get through. Um, you notice that I have a number of test points available throughout uh, the design. And what you know what's really interesting about this design is it kind of follows, if you've ever done software, it, it kind of follows a design pattern kind of idea. You know, you got your protection, you got a bandpass, you got a clamper. You got a peak detector, comparator, and, and all of these pieces, which are kind of like design patterns within themselves, come together to allow you to detect this signal and do what you want with it. So, so with that, let's continue. I did a quick tip on the rf-tools.com site, and that site allows you to design different types of filters, high pass, low pass, band pass. And in the case of this circuit, I, I wanted a bandpass filter for 1 to 200 megahertz. And that's what this does. It, anti it, excuse me, it attenuates, attenuates um, any signal not within that range and allows uh, the signal within that range to pass. So what we get is, let's say we've got our, our, our HF. We've got an HF high frequency uh, uh, amateur signal that it's coming in, it gets through the bandpass filter, and it hits this clamper DC restorer. Well, what is that? Well, when you look at the signal on a scope, you're going to see that it is centered around zero volts. You've got positive and you've got negative. Imagine a sine wave. Well, I want to push that whole thing up into the DC range. Keep it a sine wave for now, but I want to push it up. I don't really need the negative portion of it. So I used a clamper DC restorer to push that signal up and once I was able to push it up I then use a peak detector to find out you know what is the highest point of this so imagine somebody modulating you know they're using Morse code they're talking on uh, with a microphone that's called phone um, and 
as their voice goes through the air, gets translated and modulated, um, there's going to be different peak points. So what this does real time is, is it's looking at the peaks and it's triggering on the peaks and it's amplifying just the peak right here. So we're amplifying it to a value that now we can use against a comparator. So what, what the comparator is doing is using the sensitivity plot, which you tune. So you can tune in and balance for your station based upon uh, what kind of signal strength you're, you're using. You might be QRP, you might be um, doing data, you might be doing phone, uh, whatever it might be. So you can tune this so that the red for, for on the air is just turned off white what you know right there at that at that point where white is on and if you were to turn it a little more the red would come on and now you have found as you key up you're now going to start to see that you are uh, causing the red lights to come on you're basically in the on the air mode and that's what this is doing is comparing those voltages after the amplification now to actually turn on the different sets of LEDs. I, by the way, I did not use RGB LEDs. I played with them. Um, I did not like the white that I got out of an RGB. So I ended up using 10 white LEDs and 10 red LEDs. I'll show you that in a moment. But what comes out of this comparator is either 5 volts or 0 volts. If it's 5 volts, it looks like we're on the air. So the 5 volts hits this MOSFET and the MOSFET basically turns on and the red LEDs come on. Now if it's zero volts obviously that's not going to turn on so how in the world do we get the white ones on? Well in this case I generated a NOT condition using a transistor. So when we see five volts here because we're on the air what you'll get here is the transistor will turn on, will sync 5 volts, and this line will be high. No, this line will be low, excuse me. 5 volts here causes this to sync to ground, pulls it to ground, and this will not turn on. Now, when it goes to 0 volts, 0 volts comes in, turns this off, the 5 volts now drives the MOSFET and turns on turns on the white LEDs. So what you've got is a not condition. 5 volts on the air. 0 volts off the air. The 0 causes 5 volts to appear on this line right here. Now you could have done this a number of ways like with an inverter, hex inverter, not gate, you know that kind of stuff. But remember all of those are actually created with transistors. That's what the, is in those IC packages. So I thought it would be kind of cool just to use a transistor to do it. Now, if we look here, we actually have a connector, and that connector, and I'll show you why in a moment, uh, connects to this strip of LEDs. And this strip of LEDs is both the white and the red alternating in color. So if we now go over and take a look at the PCB design, maybe you'll see what I've done the PCB is laid out in such a way that when you get it printed you get it home you cut along this line here so you end up with this PCB up here and that's for all of the um, LEDs along with their uh, current limiting resistors and I'll show you how that works but Basically, the, the, uh, the LEDs are on top, and they are alternating. The resistors are on the bottom, and then you have a connector. So once you've cut this out, now you, this is the bottom part of the board down here. You've got your BNC connector. You attach your antenna to it, and then basically you've got all your test points. You've got your power protection, and I've tried to you know label it so you can actually see how all of the pieces work. So that, that's the circuit. That's really all there is to it. Now I said, I believe I said something about the timing. Currently, I did not design this. This is real time. 
this is looking at the signal real time. So it, it, it so let's say you're teeing up and calling CQ, like in the beginning of the video. Well, you can see it turn to white as I pause between words. So it's picking up the peak, but then it loses the peak because of my pause. So you could add um, a timer in here to hold that signal higher. Now, when I say timer, everyone's minds go to like a 555. That's not how I would do that. I would do it with a simple RC timing circuit. So if you put an RC timing circuit in here to hold the line at whatever it is for longer, then you could give yourself a couple seconds between the pauses. I don't really feel like it needs that. I like the way it works. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, but I give these schematics away you, and the PCB design, all the documents. You can do whatever you want with it. You can have a great time. All right, so now let's take a look at the Inkscape SVG uh, files. So Inkscape is like a free version of Illustrator. And what I use it for is a, making designs that I'm then going to cut on the laser cutter. So in this case, you see um, this is the sign, the AC9LZ sign. Uh, and the colors represent different things. Um, lines in red are cut marks. That's what tells the software that I use that this is going to be a cut with the laser. Um, items in black, which this doesn't have any, are raster engravings. And then lines in blue are vector engravings. So just like you would expect with any software package, you can change these by double clicking them, type in different things if you want. So I have actually given you let me, let me uh, open something else. Let's see here. Do I already have it open? Yes. This is the LED sign template. So you might be making a sign. You want to put your own call sign on it. Or you're going to change something about it. Maybe there's something else you want to see. Um, anyway, this is the template that you'll use if you're going to actually use the same case and the same PCB that I've done. Of course, you can go off and do your own thing too once you get some of the some of these uh, basics down. So anyway, that's the template. And then if we go and we take a look at the case, so there, there's a there's a case at the bottom that has the PCB in it and the LCDs, and that is actually created with an online tool that allows you to create a box. So if we look at this, let's see, each of these is their own piece because it had to be sent to the um, laser cutter. So this is the top of the box. Um, this is the uh, three millimeter slit. I think it's 150 by three millimeters that you slide the acrylic into. So this is being done with three millimeter thick acrylic. In, case, in the case of the box, I'm using black three millimeter acrylic. And again, remember, Red represents things that are going to be cut. So this will be cut out into a piece. If we go back and take a look, we've got, so we've got the top. Here's the back of the box. The back of the box has cutouts for controls. So this would be power. This is uh, the sensitivity pot. This is power, uh, I'm sorry, this is the power button. This is the um, power jack. And this is the BNC connector. So this is the back of the box. And I'll show you one more just for the fun of it. I mean, you get the idea. These, these fit together. Um, let's see here. In cap. I'll show you one more after that. That's kind of important. And it'll make more sense when we go put it together. So this is one of the in caps. You have two in caps. And then we also have this piece called a blinder. And the way that works is it's just a piece of acrylic, just a square or rectangular piece of acrylic. And what it does is when you take the top, so imagine that this is the inside of the box top. You take that acrylic, uh, the LED blinders, and you basically glue one here 
and one here. And then the LED PCB fits on top. So what you've done is you've created a little blinder. So you've created a blinder on the left and the right, and then the, the LED PCB sits on top and gets hot glued in place. That way, you're directing all of the illumination, all of the lighting up through um, the slit. So it doesn't, you're not lighting the inside of your PCB. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this project. Um, at least this part of the series of the project. Um, in the next part, we'll actually cut some of the pieces out. I'll show you how we put them together. Uh, we'll put together a PCB. We'll go ahead and laser cut out um, another sign and uh, see how it all comes together. So if you have any questions between uh, releases of the, of the videos, feel free to ask some questions. I try to respond to all questions that are posted on YouTube. So anyway, thanks. Uh, remember, learn something new every day.